How's it going, everybody? Welcome in, welcome in. I think that was possibly the fastest rug I've ever seen happen on Spaces. But at least we're here now. We're live on the eve of after the day after announcement of our orchestration API being live on mainnet. So again, we want to welcome everybody in. And I want to welcome my co-host, Ant-Man, and then, of course, our special guests. Excited to be here. We go. Thanks for the intro. And then for those of you who don't know, Dean, Roland, quick introductions for yourselves. Oh, well, I'm CEO of Agoric and, uh, and occasionally get to dabble in the technical side. And I, I lead product at Agoric. Uh, hey, everybody. And woohoo! Orchestration API. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Yeah, so t we we really wanted to take today to briefly, you know, give it give an overview of, you know, the orchestration API, uh, the vision behind, you know, the every all the work that went into it, and of course we we'll get into the core features and the capabilities of the API itself. So, Dean, why don't why don't we kick it off? Why why was why was this necessary? What was the API, and, and how does it how does it align with kind of Agoric's mission? to make smart contract development a bit more accessible. Um, first, let me check y your, 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 your voice distorted out there. Can you hear me fine? I can hear you great, Dean. Great, yeah, we hear okay. you perfect. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, in February, we started talking with Near and Flashbots and, and, and uh, I think Particle Networks, jo you know, joined the fray in term and bringing chain abstraction to the forefront of of um, uh, the crypto industry, where it's about enabling users to use crypto assets and services without being entangled in the details of the underlying chains. And there's a lot of folks approaching that, a lot of folks doing that, in, approaching in various ways. But the thing that we bring uniquely that comes from our both the vision and the technical model is the ability to program that stuff, right? It's the ability to build general end-to-end -end use cases. This is, the, this is what orchestration API enables, is I can write a use case that starts on one chain with one token and ends on another chain with a service delivered, in, even in some other ecosystem, and I can have that be an, a, something that the user authorizes directly. Rather than having to authorize and sign individual transactions, we can build that end-to-end -end use case and have that be something that, that runs on-chain. And that uses you know, unique technology that we've been working on for a, a, a very long time. And it's just so exciting to see it come out as, a, as, as something that's now um, just easy to program, easy to access, and, and, and bridging to, to lots of other chains here. Yeah, which I, which I think is is really interesting now, and I think one of the one of the key points that we make in in our announcement is um, the edge that we're we're giving our users with the API with uh, native multi block execution. So so Roland, I guess question for you: How does it differentiate from traditional smart contract platforms? Uh, specifically, why is this kind of feature key for the future of of cross chain DApps? Yeah, um, and, and so I'll start with sort of the unique thing about the Agoric model that, that frankly is, is the thing that's so hard to build and that, that does differentiate us and allows us to do this, which is the ability to have contracts as long running processes on chain, which, um, you know, reach consensus every block, but don't necessarily terminate their execution every block, right? And so when what we realized was the marriage of that model, which was the model we were already building and the model that we believe is the right the right thing for the, the crypto ecosystem long-term with the need for um, effectively that on its own in, in all cross-chain applications. So um, if you are, conducting in, you know, with a smart contract, conducting an operation that spans multiple chains, by definition, that action needs to span multiple blocks, right? You have the, the action that occurs in the block on your originating chain, you may have trigger some action on a remote chain, and then you need a re reply. And as you get to more and more robust capability, that back and forth may happen multiple times. And so you need a model where the contract can continue operating through that whole process. Um, and for us, 
you know, uh, or developers building on Agoric, where they can simply just say, await oh, the, re the response here. Uh, we just make building these cross-chain apps so much easier. And so when we talk about multi-block execution, that's really what we're getting at, is the ability for, for contracts to just continue operating um, through the course of multiple multiple blocks and, and, and getting to Dean's point, which is, the the user the thing the user wants to achieve is not some small constrained action that must occur within the span of a block on a blockchain it it could be arbitrarily long and that's what the agoric contracts enable and so when when we deliver chain abstraction this way we're that's that's sort of our model for it and the thing that um, is hard or impossible to replicate elsewhere yeah that that I'll I'll add to that right existing platforms, you know, ETH, Gosm, Wasm, Solana, et cetera, they really are designed to where your program starts and ends within a block. And as Roland said, the user's use case doesn't. And it really, you know, over the period we've been talking about uh, orchestration, talking about chain abstraction from, from the beginning of the year, that, that differentiator of being able to have that end-to-end -end cross chain use case be a thing that you could just see in simple code and that the user could approve in a single action, you know, it just became so clear how how that's what that's what users are reaching for, and that's what all these uh, you know all the chain abstraction solutions are trying to reach for. The thing that orchestration gives you is the ability to program arbitrary stuff that way. You know, there's lots of, as I said, there's these point use cases of I want to do a swap, and that's really powerful and really valuable, and and we can of course do that, but it's it's a it's a powerful valuable thing that some people want to do, but it doesn't get you all the way to, you know, all the other things they want to do. Like, I don't want to do a swap. I want to do a purchase or I want to do a staking arrangement or I want to do all these other use cases that are longer than just do a single action, even if it's a single action across chain. And that's a, a perfect segue to discussing some of the core features, you know, of the orchestration API and how it lets developers and users benefit from, you know, the all the benefits of these uh, long-lived contracts. Um, Dean, you started to mention a few example use cases. Um, can you expand a little bit more on like what's the impact of these uh, contracts that can automatically adjust you know to events over time for developers and how can <laughs> users benefit from that as well? I'll, I'll give one example and then I'll throw it over to Roland as you know as uh, as uh, 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 our, our product heavy. Um, when I first um, presented code that was, you know, await, undelegate my position on Celestia. This was, you know, we had, we had showed code. Here's how you would, you know, have USDC turned into, you know, swap for Celestia, bring it over to Celestia chain, stake it. And then, you know, Stride came out with their airdrop. And so we said, the okay, now everyone's got this stake thing. What do you do from here? Well, here's the lines of code, you know, go out to my Celestia position and unstake it and wait for that. And that's going to be 21 days later and then move it over to stride and liquid stake it or move it over to drop, whatever it is, and have it liquid stake and have this 21 day process in, in eight lines of code. And someone immediately goes, yeah, but what if the price changed? I mean, 21 days is a long time. What if the price changed? And now like the price of just buying it on osmosis is, is better than liquid staking it yourself. And that's a great question. And the answer was, of course, it's JavaScript, right? It's just JavaScript. You, that sounds to me like you want to reach out, to, reach out to Osmosis, find out the current price, reach out to Stride, find out the redemption price, compare the two, and if it's, you know, if, if, the, if the Osmo price is lower, then just go and buy it on Osmo and otherwise go and liquid stake it. And that would be instead of, you know, eight lines of code, now we're talking 10 lines of code, right, or something. Right, and it's one of those things where the ability to build that kind of rich logic in, when you've got you know a real programming language natively executing, where any of the steps can be, well, reach out to those two chains, and whichever one gets back to me first, I want to do something. You know, that that that's an example of taking what people can kind of sort of do now and letting them finish it out to the thing that the users actually want, or letting them take the next step to that, you know. Once I can do easy money movement, now I want to do easy money movement ending with a purchase. Or I want to do unbond a position, move the money, and then do a purchase. Or I want to you know, do a purchase and then sell it when it crosses a certain price. And I want to be able to do all those as sort of the end-to-end -end use case instead of the individual steps. 
um, Roland can speak. Uh, Roland can speak on specific features in the orchestration API, um, and then we'll talk, of course, about where it's where it's going from there. So I'll I'll, I'll wrap up there. All right, product yeah. heavy. Let's hear it. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Um, yeah. So so with the orchestration API that launched, what you can do as a developer is very straightforwardly request uh, an object that represents the chain. So you know, get me a, an object that re represents the Celestia chain. Um, call make account, so create an account on the Celestia chain, which then only your smart contract controls. Your smart contract has has the cap has the only capability in the world that can control that account. Um, you can do asset transfer back and forth between accounts that contracts control. You can do PFM hops, so uh, within Cosmos, this is multi-chain hops with, with those assets. Um, and then delegate, undelegate. So, you know, manage staking positions and all that stuff on um, um, uh, manage staking positions on on Cosmos chains. And so, really, within the IBC connected ecosystem, that gets you almost an arbitrarily interesting set of capabilities that you can combine. Because once you can control an uh, once you can control an account on a remote chain, um, and I missed this, you you can also invoke. Uh, an action on that remote chain that might be chain specific. So if it's stride, that might be a liquid stake action. If it's osmosis, it might be a swap or a, a join an LP pool kind of action. Um, you can send those arbitrary messages to that account. And so you can you can do all sorts of orchestration within the Cosmos ecosystem with just this first launch. And then uh, we will we are going to be rapidly iterating on the API to just add more and more capabilities underneath. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'll stop there for now, but that's that's what we can do with what just launched, and we're we're super excited to see what people come and build. When, I I, I got to add um, one of the one of the pieces. You know, you have to sort of dog food your own APIs. There is an orchestration basics application that, that developers can see how a lot of these gets used and how it pulls together. And you know, the orchestration application is like. Huh, I might want to actually use this in production. Is that possible? You know, because it's got, you know, manage, you know, make accounts on various other chains, move money between them, just drag it around, go stake over there. And it's sort of starting to come together as this, as this, as this, you know, if I could only just do those things, it turns out to be, you know, better than most of the tools you can get anywhere. So it's really cool. Anyway. Yeah, Dean you. and I were actually Dean and I were actually just on a conversation uh, where we kind of were like, "Wait a second, this orchestration basics app that um, our our killer DevRel lead built um, mostly as a side project to demonstrate the the documentation and demonstrate what developers can do is basically like a really interesting multi chain wallet, um, and it's like only two steps away from that as a product. And so, uh, if nobody else builds that, we may end up doing it." Now, don't I see Tabasco that, in the you audience. Have to spec it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did drop a link to the uh, orchestration basics app, the repo. If anyone is curious and wants to tinker, looking at you, Tabasco. Um, awesome, um, Roland. Just before to close out these core features, um, you talked a lot about what the API can do. Uh, can you just quickly give us a sense of like what is the sort of before and after with doing some of these processes now that the API is live? Like trying to recreate some of that with what we've done now. Uh, yeah, and, and so meaning without the API, how would you accomplish this now with the API? How how can you? Um, uh, I, I correct. Think really, yeah, yeah. So so really, what it gets to is is simplicity for developers and and ease of not only just uh, readability of what you're actually building and um, and things like that, but also having the API handle error cases for you um, without getting into too many specifics here. Just that sort of thing makes it so much easier to build, also makes it easier to ensure that um, as apps deploy on Agoric and need to be upgraded, sort of the, they're in line with their functionality. We know how error cases are getting handled um, and, and things like that just get, get managed for the developer. And so that allows you to do things like, um, okay, get chain Celestia underneath the hood, that probably is going to require a bunch of low level IBC kinds of messages to create the ICA, make sure that it, it gets handled to the right place. Um, and so now developers just don't need to learn that stuff, right? You, you can just simply learn the APIs um, and, and, and develop that way. Um, and what we will continue doing as we build out, by the way, is allowing for arbitrary message passing um, to the chains that get supported such that if there is a function that isn't directly supported by the API yet, 
um, you still can build it, right? Like you absolutely can can use all of the Agoric structures and then say, oh, this one thing isn't covered yet. Well, I can just send that message. You know, I, I know what that message needs to look like. I can send that to my account on that remote chain on my own. Um, and so developers shouldn't view this as like a limitation, but it is um, just a source of significant ease. You know, what I'll add to that, right? You know, the, the, there's there's the two faces of it, right? There's make possible, you know, simplify uh, implementation by developers, but it's more than just simplify, right? It's not a little bit easier. It's fundamental support for this multi-block action. You know, these systems that I said, where it starts and ends within, within a block, they provide essentially zero support because they can't, because they're just not in a position to do so, zero support for the action, you know, cross-chain actions where I'm going to send a message and now I want to naturally know right here what I want to do when I get a response, but instead I've got to do some incredibly Baroque thing to store what's happening and arrange the callback and all, and get a callback in when the right thing comes out. And, and it's just all this manual work instead of just, oh, wait, okay, I got the answer, let me move on. And so it's one of those things where it's, it's a fundamental qualitative difference like building an assembly language versus building in a high level programming language right it is it is that ability to naturally express things that will let you do you know first these next steps of 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 straightforward you know simple coordination and then as you start to add more and more business logic pretty soon it's stuff that there's just no place to stand in current in current crypto environments to be able to do these, you know, a portfolio rebalance on chain between pools that are implemented by different parties in different ecosystems. And that's the kind of thing that we will get to. We'll all start with these these simple, straightforward cases that are currently really hard. But getting to those those, those sophisticated ones is the kind of thing that this enables. And and I'll add. And the kind of thing that users want, right? If you look at the, you know, the TradFi world, the normal online world, right? It's trillions of dollars every day orchestrated by JavaScript, you know, managing lots of underlying services that that that, that do low-level stuff. That that kind of coordination is what orchestration is about. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it's really interesting. We, we got a chance to touch on a little bit here. What 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 does that look like? What what is what is the roadmap moving forward? What and I guess a question to the both of you: What does the evolution of the API look like? Uh, what's next? Any alpha or is there? You know, we also talked about adoption. I think I'd also like to hear any dream collaborations out there. I think now that we have the audience, and for those of you listening to us in the future, like who does Agoric uh, want to collab with and? Who would the API significantly help? Sure, um, and and so I'll, I'll I'll touch on both of those, I guess. Um, for the roadmap piece, and unfortunately, probably not alpha because I think we've kind of telegraphed this already. Um, but the roadmap for the the orchestration API, I like to think of as is sort of moving in two dimensions, right? One one dimension is what I call reach, which is what are the chains that Agoric orchestration contracts can easily reach and control. And so this API launch that um, happened this week is focused on IDC connected chains um, simply because those those are the things that are um, easy for us for to, to first control and allow us to sort of dog through the product quickly. But then we very quickly want to move on to connecting to EVM chains, right? And so um, we're already talking with partners that would sort of allow for different pieces of that. And then there will also be a phased rollout of that capability. So certain certain portions of reach to EVM will be possible very soon, uh, focused around token transfer and message passing. You know, you, you've seen um, Union, Axelar, existing bridging systems that allow that. We can very neatly fold that into the orchestration APIs and, and sort of combine that with existing capabilities to turn into, um, frankly, it's just like fundamentally new things that you could do between EVM and Cosmos. Um, and then once make account on EVM is possible, then you very much more straightforwardly can build effectively EVM to EVM kinds of orchestration where the user never really moves their assets directly into Cosmos at all, um, or at least is not aware that that's happening underneath the hood. 
Um, and so that starts to bring Agoric into any ecosystem that's relevant in the crypto space. Um, and our plan is to simply sort of follow the activity, right? And so EVM, we, we see a lot of uh, requests from builders that want to be able to orchestrate EVM kinds of applications. Um, and then we're starting to look into Solana as likely the next the next direction. Though, if we see you know significant interest in the Celestia rollup ecosystem, then perhaps that would get slotted in ahead. Uh, and so that's that's how we're thinking about reach. Um, the other dimension is depth, which is sort of what is the level of capability we can we can do on any individual chain. And that's where I talk about sort of the phase rollout with with Ethereum uh, or with EVM chains. We'll sort of start more shallow uh, with, and be clear about what use cases can get enabled with what we've built so far. And then as we get deeper into being able to create accounts, being able to get notifications, um, the, the available use cases increase. Um, so that's sort of the direction there. And likely, you know, what I've just stated probably takes us through Q1 of next year. Um, and, you know, obviously sort of reacting as well to what we see in the market and what builders are coming to us with what problems. Um, so that was, that was a bit of a long answer on the roadmap piece. On the dream collaboration piece, I, I'm curious what Dean would say also. Um, I, I think there's sort of a few versions of this. One of them is who are the teams that are really pushing the space forward already in, in multi-chain or chain abstraction or sort of building out these cross-chain use cases. I think there's sort of this set of folks that are already on the edge and are experiencing certain pains uh, because it is just frankly hard to to build these things that that are pains that we can help solve. Uh, and so we're looking at all of those folks already as either technological partners or possibly builder partners. Um, and many of those conversations have sort of already started. Um, you know, an example there that is very well known in the Cosmos ecosystem, but maybe less so out outside is is the Skip team, right? Like they're super, super strong technically. They understand the cross chain space. They've run up against the edges of what's possible already, and so working with them is something that you know we're very interested in um, for that for that reason. And then you know beyond that, there's just what are the large groups that are moving. Um, large amounts of assets back and forth, you know, in, in any, um, in any context. And so, you know, obviously circle has a CCTP bridge for USDC. That's something that orchestration can and will help extend. And so starting to look at what additional collaborations we could do there. And there's, there's sort of a whole bunch of things along that, um, along that pathway that would be, you know, dream collaborations for us or, or interesting things that we could enable with orchestration. Yeah, it's, it's worth noting that that the, the we've gotten the strongest positive reaction traction. People, you know, stepping up to to look at the API or, or act as design partners about what they need for next round of features or that sort of thing for uh, platforms that have users already, right? And to me, that's really exciting because it's one of those things where. The, you know, platforms that have users, the users are asking for multi-chain, right? And 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 the, the, you know, the applications like, uh, gee, how do I do this? Or what? You know, here's what I you can currently do on my site. I'm a perp platform, and if only I could easily get yield from those other platforms and pulled right into a perp and give them back, you know, a daily return or something. There, you know, that's what my customers are asking for. How can I offer that to them? And orchestration is a vehicle by which they could do that, right? And so they've got clear use cases that have clear users that are asking for a specific thing and we can go, yep, yeah, we can do that with, we, we can do that with you. Um, you know, we can help you do that, right? And so that's exciting. Um, you know, and and um, uh, the big ecosystems, I mean, the big, the big services, they have users those users all want multi-chain, and so you know, you know, moving um, from uh, into those class of projects will be a big unlock, um, not just for Agoric and orchestration, but also for them because it enables their users that actively want to do more stuff to do more stuff and get more value. I think that. Um... That, that completely makes sense and it was really nice to hear about you know what what the future looks like and and the dream collaborations and i'm sure if any of, of those you know other other players in the game want to kind of come collab with us and you know dms are always open on x you know feel free to reach out to us and you know we'll get those conversations going um so we actually had 
two questions from community. Um, one that I will answer, which is more in my wheelhouse, and then another that I'll probably throw to, to you, Dean, specifically. Uh, the first question, which I'll answer is, we want to see more content, uh, not only announcements, and you know, to recap what the last two and a half weeks have looked like for us at Agoric. Um, we were at Token 2049. We had some really great content, so really some speaker videos that will come out very soon. We were at Abstract Summit also, which we did a lot of content around, which is really fantastic. Um, we had our uh, developer relations and Giovanni and Encode Hackathon, which was fantastic. You know, he got to showcase uh, building and working with, with the API. Um, we had these two spaces. We had this one today. Uh, to talk about the orchestration API on mainnet. And then we also had our fast USDC not too long ago with Yelena from, from Noble, which was another fantastic conversation. Um, we recently announced Cosmosverse, which you know, Dean is going to be speaking at. So it's going to be fantastic uh, content coming out from there. And then, you know, the, the two major announcements which I already had mentioned before. So more content along the lines of shareables of you know, education and things like that for sure in the pipeline. And I think that's something that um, we're working towards um, as a group, at least on the marketing side. So uh, it's it's going to get done. And as soon as that is shared, I'll, I'll be in the Discord, I'll be in Telegram, and I'll be in all these different places, to, you know, really share all this fantastic content that we're producing, we're producing internally. So I, I appreciate that question because, again, I know people are very focused on, you know, how can they continue to share the good Agora gospel once they once they finish listening to us here or they see a really cool announcement. Like, what else can they could kind of potentially share to their external audience and themselves, share to friends, share to family to learn more about Agora. So that's some fantastic stuff. Um, well, and if your developer, question, come start building. Because yeah. yeah, the API true. is there. You can do amazing things. 100%. The second question was uh, about Calypso uh, and what specifically happened with that deployment. And I'll I'll shoot that over sure. to you, Dean. Yeah. So, um, you know, we 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 ha we've done a lot of work with Calypso and really appreciate having done stuff with them, where they helped get a lot of the direction and 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 you know uh, uh, initial motivation to get orchestration going. They are, Calypso is built by Mystic Labs, which is an independent third-party team, not related to Goric, and they ultimately determine their timelines. You know, as with any other uh, small company, small project, um, realities of the world uh, intrude on them, and they have another product, their defund rollup, which launched recently and just has consumed their attention and is, and, and is, and, you know, the, the timing of that, you know, happened to uh, collide with with the finishing phase of Calypso, and they just had to had to address that. So we help them to finish and launch launch Calypso app when they're ready. Um, other people that are interested in Calypso might contact them to see about um, uh, driving it forward if they like, and we very much support it. You know, we stay in contact with them. They're, they've got some amazing ideas, and we'll continue to contribute ideas to the orchestration space. Um, but, uh, you know, as I said, it, you know, when that launches, that'll be something we support, but it'll be entirely up to them. And, you know, I think they are currently consumed. So, so there are other projects that are building on Agoric that we are as excited about. And, you know, and that goes to, you know, we're, we're excited to have developers come in through the DevRels platform, you know, talk to Giovanni and enable these brand new kinds of apps that can do cross-chain stuff. I think there's a lot of those, there's, there's a couple of those that are in our EAP program now um, that are, that are, that are um, starting to, to work on stuff with the API, which by the way, you know, um, uh, Mystic Labs were intrepid adventurers working on stuff before the API. The API takes some of the stuff they were working on and vastly simplifies doing it to make it easier for lots more programmers to do that, some of that kind of stuff. Um, and so, as I said, there are folks in the EAP, EAP program that are doing that and, um, you know, and helping drive the what are the features that should be in the, uh, in the next addition, next extension um, to the orchestration API for, um, for any uh, new work that they're doing. Um, so, uh, so if you're a developer, if you have cross-chain project, by all means, uh, join the, 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 the uh, early access program and, and get building. CEO of Agoric, 
director of product at Agoric. And man, I think that was one hell of a conversation. I think we followed up from the Fast UC conversation with another banger. Absolutely. Upward trajectory. Up only. 100%. So then, of course, we appreciate the both of you for joining us today. And we appreciate everybody who's listening to us right now. Again, if you enjoyed the conversation, see, please. Let me, let me jump in. I see one yeah, uh, key question. Someone asked, what notification access? And so um, I don't know if that's uh, too low level to jump into here, Roland, if you have anything to say about that. But ICQ integration, to be able to just say, hey, what's the price on that other chain is, is really powerful. Um, I think that notific additional notification access is one of those extension things that if you have a need for it, come talk to us and we'll work through the details. Do you have other things to say about the notification stuff, Roland? Uh, no, I think you hit it. Um, I and we'll follow up uh, offline, but I'm curious where you saw that question. Because, oh, that's in the uh, that's in the chat thread on the event here. Which um, got it. Uh, okay. So so we'll follow up with you. Thank you for the question. I will now turn it back over to to Miguel. Leave your questions in the comment section in the thread. Like last time, we'll hop in after the fact and answer them. If you have if something comes up when you re-listen to us, for those of you in the future, again appreciate it if you listen all the way through. Make sure you retweet, like it, share it. It's going to be up on YouTube in a second. So if you're a more YouTube fan, it's going to be on YouTube as well. And then anybody who is on Discord, Telegram, again, appreciate it for you guys coming over right now and giving us uh, some time to listen to us. So again, we'll see you in the next one. I and mean, then we appreciate it. And just stay tuned. And in the meantime, orchestrate all the things. <laughs> A hundred percent. Orchestrate, build, build the impossible, like our video says. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much.